have meeting at exact 2 p.m. and I have to go rush for it. It's right now 1:30. But yeah, cool. Let's see what the problem says. The problem simply says that uh, again, uh, if you want to have all these updates, please go and join the Telegram channel. Now, simply says that uh, continuous array. What says very short and crisp and concise statement. We have a binary array. Binary array is in binary as in the numbers will be one or zero, and it's an array of callers nums. We have to return the maximum length continuous sub array. Huh, I don't know why they have written continuous because sub array is for sure continuous. We have to return the maximum length of sub array, which is continuous with equal number of zeros and ones. So if we go very brute force way, then we can very easily see that okay, they are asking for a sub array so i can do one thing i know i can generate all the n square sub arrays for it and then i can go and iterate on that specific sub array and count the number of count the number of zeros and ones if they are equal that's a good sub array for me and i can increase or maximize keep on maximizing the length that's one way which will for sure take o of n cube time because you are actually trading on ij then when you have got that ij pair then you will actually go and count the number of zeros and ones in that specific ij and then if that count is equal okay you can try maximizing your maximum length answer but again you, you can improvise it very easily because we have standardly seen that when we do operation on a sub array rather than generating the sub array first and then going on to my sub array which is o of n I can actually club this up, which means while generating the sub array, I can keep on counting. So what I can do is, okay, while I while my ij is here, okay, my count of one is one. Ij is here. Now I'll just increase my count of one. Now count of one has become two. When my j is here, now my count of one is two. Count of zero has become one. When my j is here, count of one is now three. Count of zero is one. So you saw, I don't have to specifically go and iterate on the entire ij again. As I'm moving my j point, I can simply say, bro. Simply add that specific J, increase the count, increase the count. Okay, now that that thing is done. So you can simply ignore this or remove this and then can get things done in O of n square time, which is still high. Now you will think of Rn, how can I now improvise it? Now for improvising that, we will again go back and check the question. The question says that we have to find the maximum length again. So if I imagine that my current length is length or let's say answer, so I have to maximize this answer. That's my last step, last step. Okay. Next step says, okay, again, we are going on, we, we, are, we are just seeing what are the important points of the problem and then we will just put in, okay, it's the step number three, which is the last step. I have to just get the length. Again, my main aim is to get the length. Then last step is to maximize the length. Okay. Getting the length is actually my aim. Okay, great. Now, uh, length of what? Of the sub array. Again, I will only see the sub array, which actually makes the question much more simpler. Subsequence makes it hard. Again, there can be just two possible options. Either, it, it, either they would have asked a subset or a subsequence or a sub array. Now, more or less, subsequence and a subset are same. Like again, they have their differences. But yeah, for your terms, it can be same. But the easier one is subset sub array in which you can apply many optimizations for example two pointers sliding again i'm just telling as you read the sub array what all you can think of applying as an optimization you can apply maybe two pointers um like sliding window you can apply line sweep you can apply multiple stuff in your sub array set. again there are multiple projects let's say prefix um like uh prefix multiplication which is prefix product suffix um all that stuff you can apply with your sub array but not with this subsequence. So, okay, this gave us a bit hint now, but the main aim was length of what? Length of an array portion with equal number of zeros and ones. So, ultimately, Arin, you are saying that I have to keep track the count of zeros and ones. Okay, so let's come back and let's keep track of count of zeros and ones. Okay, count of one is one so far, count of one is two. Again, I'm keeping track of count of zeros and ones. Okay, count of one is three, count of one is four. Now, again, count of zero, I will keep track of, okay, count of zero here is no, like nothing. Count of zero is one, count of zero is two, count of zero is three, count of zero is four. Now, now Aryan, you are saying that I want a specific sub array such that, okay, if I am, if I am saying it's a three. So, so far, so far, my count of zero is a three. So, I should ideally be looking for, ideally be looking for something. Something such that my count of one should also come as three that I'm looking for. So 
either what I can do is okay Aryan uh, you can just search for the latest one which is latest latest one in this window so I can just directly think of backwards let's say I'm the again I'm at specific index I'm just trying to find can I find a sub array with can I find a sub array with equal number of zeros and ones for equal number I actually keep track of the count now I was just trying can I easily figure out what is the sub array because again I want the sub array which is the length of the sub array so I just want how big is this sub array with equal number of zeros and ones I can see it has three zeros maybe it is useful for me maybe not but maybe if I can get three zeros three ones then <laughs> bro great if not maybe I can get two ones two ones I can just try for multiple possibilities but Aryan like if you are standing here then you will have to go and search for the one which is just near you then for that specific one you need to know that okay you need to have three ones so you have to actually go and check for three ones um you just wanted count right and that to equal oh so I wanted count only I, I don't have any other numbers so I don't want to keep track of the individual counts that's not required the thing which is required is that count should be equal which means again when when you see a count needs to be equal which means let's say if I, 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 even if I take give you a b or like any two things and I ask you the count to be equal then you have to devise something that your problem becomes much easier now you have different numbers you cannot relate any number with any other number why if on the contrary I know the numbers are just two so one number I can give a plus one other number I, I can give a minus one right again that that is applicable for all the variations if, even if I give you two different characters still you can assign one of the characters as plus one other as minus one again in the in the other variation of this problem you have let's say three characters then you might end up giving a like again you might end up giving a plus one zero or minus one or 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 plus one minus one or a two maybe some other thing but usually you will see just the two variations as in that uh, you are just given two different characters now I thought of okay let's let's I just want to keep track right so let's keep track okay one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine twenty ten twenty eleven twenty twelve twenty thirteen twenty fourteen twenty fifteen twenty sixteen twenty seventeen twenty eighteen twenty nineteen twenty 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 twenty
the problem has changed a slight bit from this prefix sum and now it has came up to right okay 10 minus 1 it is 9 so this sum would have been 9 now i'm saying Aryan, Aryan, uh this prefix sum should have been 0 so the prefix sum it is 0 again you know that this prefix sum is nothing but your let's say you are currently at the jth pointer right so it will be nums of j again when i say nums i am i actually mean the prefix sum prefix sum this this array which you have built this this array which you have built so prefix sum of j minus prefix sum of i minus 1 this should be 0 now if i am saying if i am saying the sum should be 0 so for sure both of them prefix sum of j should be equal to prefix sum of i minus 1 if that is the case if that is the case bro you have equal number of zeros and ones and you can also see very clearly again if you remembered by default we put a zero in the beginning again i'll just for your simplicity i will simply map these numbers so that you can see very very clearly how things are working right yeah 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 cool um i go in memes but yeah so you saw that if i go and ask you bro one one both are same again by our generated pattern again we went on and backtracked how things should look like then we generated okay we need a prefix sum then from prefix sum we again got and said that if your prefix sum of j again when like when i say j my which means my j is here now i'm trying to see what is the sub array which has this sum of zero which means its prefix sum of j should be equal to prefix sum of i minus one as you can see this value is equal to this value so this is a valid good candidate and you can also see if i take this specific portion one zero equal number of ones and zeros okay great iron let's say if i am at if i am at this place so i have a one so i can also choose this thing i can also choose this thing which means if i choose this thing which means zero one this is also equal number of zeros and ones and then i can also choose this specific thing you can see the specific thing it also has one zero one zero it has it also has equal number of zeros and ones but Aryan, did you come back to our last statement our last statement says maximum length maximum length so it is very much very much important for us that we go on to the extreme extreme leftmost one if i am at this one which means if my j is this one this one is my j so i should actually go into the extreme leftmost one to actually find the maximum length because i'm only about the maximum length so if my i will be here so it is j it is i so if i mark the indexes as 0 1 2 3 4 so j minus i will be the length of will be the length of my sub array with equal number of ones and zeros and that's how you can simply solve it so again uh, a quick dry run what will happen is that you are the, at you will simply keep on moving your i or j whatever you want to move let's say i am moving my j itself now again i will start start my j from here one okay i have found nothing for it okay simply my map again you know that you will keep on maintaining the prefix sum prefix sum you can maintain parallelly it's just that what you need one thing one thing you need for every element what is the first occurrence of that element i didn't need first occurrence because if you remember for one i don't need this occurrence uh -huh. i need the first occurrence of one whichever happened for this one also i need the first occurrence of one for this zero i need the first occurrence of zero for this zero i need the first occurrence of zero for two i need the first occurrence of two so i need the first occurrence of anything so i'll just keep track of a map which will give me the first occurrence right so okay every again first occurrence of a specific character so i'll just go uh, and say that bro this is the first occurrence for us now which means map of zero again map of zero initially the first occurrence again occurrence as in index if you remember i want if i am at j so i want okay the first occurrence of that specific again if i am at j which means i am at one so first occurrence of that element one itself what's the index of that so i need okay for my map map says okay first occurrence first occurrence of that specific element is nothing but the index of that so as you saw that i i did not have any occurrence of one previously so i'll just simply say map of one will become a zero right again okay, map of zero which is the by default value in the very beginning of our prefix sum approaches we put a index of minus one right because index minus one will not affect us it will actually help us to generate the maximum length because here if the index is five and minus one will become a six so the length you can see is easily six one two three four five and six cool now the same way keep on going uh let's say my j is now next time here so one 
as I see, okay, one is already there previously. So I'll firstly update my answer. Answer will be maximum of maximum of answer comma j minus i. And again, j is the current j I am at and minus i. I as in simple. Existing map. Check the map. Map says map is the first occurrence of what? First occurrence of what? First occurrence of my that specific character, which is nothing but nums of j. Nums of j. Or I can simply like when I'm iterating on the entire for loop, so I can just simply say add as an element also. So that is how I will just try and keep on maximizing my answer. Cool. And that's how you can actually build the code. Now uh, I know that this should be first occurrence of stuff. So let's let me quickly change it that this is the first occurrence. Cool. Now, if you remember, you are actually iterating on this specific prefix sum array. You are iterating on this specific prefix sum array. So uh, here, if you had gone and seen very carefully, we wanted this specific value, prefix sum value to look for its first occurrence. Right. So the, here, here needs to be the prefix sum value at this specific J pointer. At this specific J pointer, we want the prefix sum value. My writing is so bad. So bad. No, no, no. Good. Um, so what happened? Simply, we will have the prefix sum, which again, you can build a separate array for it or you can keep on computing parallelly also. It's up to you. I will say keep on computing parallelly. Although space will not actually optimize that much because you are, have to use the first occurrence and that first occurrence uh, another map will take a open space so you can actually say okay by reducing by not bringing up my by, by not making my prefix array separately i'm actually optimizing my space by saying i'm not using extra space of o of n that's it so you have the answer which is the final length and then you can simply keep on going in this specific entire array add on in the perfect sum again if the element is one add a one corresponding to it if the element is minus or zero then add a minus one corresponding to it and we saw that why we were actually doing it. Now, if any element has any of the first occurrences before, its first occurrence is there before, then check for that specific occurrence before and that specific occurrence location minus the current index, right? In the explanation, I showed J or you can put it I also. It's up to you. Most of the people keep I in the explanations. So that's the reason we can take it again. It's just an index. You can take whatsoever you want. So it will be the distance or the length of that specific from I to your first occurrence. So this is the entire length for you. Again, you have to maximize this length. So just keep on maximizing your answer. And again, if you are finding it for the first time, again, for the first time, so the first occurrence will be updated with the current index. Again, only if you are finding that for the first time. Whenever you, you find something for the first time, only then you will update its index and ultimately return the answer. And that's how in time of O of N and space of O of N, you can actually solve it. Cool. I hope that you guys got it. Again, uh, very apologies for the bad handwriting, but I could not make the notes today because I only have just this 30 minutes to do everything and I don't want to miss today's problem. Okay. Uh, if you had still some issues with the handwriting, I'll try to do something probably in the future uh, but yeah that's it uh, cool thing goodbye take care bye bye thank you bye bye chill cheers